Yeah. We are live right now. Yes. If you took Kelly Swanson's bag Hi, from the media room. Oh, yes, the what? please. Can you return my bag? Please like, return I'm her sure bag. I just misplaced it because I trust everybody in this room. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Anybody no. boxing and themselves. The tone has been really respectful between the two guys. Where on the scale of difficulty to get to fight week planning does this work? Perfect. They're both on time. They're both willing to do the work, to get ready for the fight. And they've been, they've worked really hard throughout the whole promotion. So the two fighters are happy to participate and give the media what they need. It's, it's pretty easy for us. Mm -hmm. You've been through this, you've been through so many of these. Is there one fight in particular or one media week that you absolutely love to work with? Oh, there's so many. I have to think back. I love Mayweather Ricky Hatton. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I mean, any Floyd's fights were always exciting because it was such big energy. Um, I don't know. I love boxing, so they're all pretty exciting to me. The first big fight I ever covered was uh, Floyd versus Canelo. And my favorite thing of that fight week was the weigh-in day. And it was crazy. Like, the MGM was full, like it was fight night. And I remember when you called us to go to report to our seats because the stream was going to start. And the people started cheering for us because I think they thought we were the fighters. That was it. I was all, after that, I, I was, yeah, I quit my job you after were that. You were I quit after my that. HR job after that. And you started looking for you on autograph. I'll tell you, the um, Hopkins, Joe Calzaghe fight. Oh. So back in the day, I used to have to call press. The press. I used to be like Ray Flores. I used to be the voice of the press. I did everything. Wow. So we did these big voice. tours, and I would have said, "And he's the three-time world champ." Blah, blah 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen. And so for the. The, yeah, Hopkins, Peltaggy. So it was at the uh, Planet Hollywood, as a matter of fact. And we used the stage there. And then I was walking just through the lobby or whatever. And I hear this I hear this guy. Oh, look, look, look. There's a lady from the stage. <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh, yes. It's just little old me doing my job. I think it was kind of if you guys don't know Kelly Swanson, she's tripping. Yeah, Swanson Communications, she's responsible for many fighters, but the, the one fighter everyone talks or thinks about is Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. 15 so, years with Mayweather. Yeah, so people are probably like, who's this lady on here? From the first pay per view fight he had uh, all the way to the end of his career. I started with him with um, the Arturo Gatti fight, which was the last big fight before pay -per -view. Did you approach him and say, I can be, I can do you know, your pet or your PR or your PC? Well, how did that happen? How did that happen? I had worked with some other fighters and they were aware of my work with the other fighters, Vernon Forrest in particular, but not Hopkins. And so Leonard Ellerby uh, sought me out. Um, instead of looking for a publicist, Floyd wants his own publicist at the time. He was working with Top Rank. They were handling most of his um, media requests. But by that time, he had started to come into his own and they wanted to have own person. So. Is that when he was making his shift from Top Rank to sell, uh, buy out his contract? Right uh, at that time? No, because I worked there at Toro Gotti fight. Oh, okay. Top Rank fight, but I think it was just more like where his career was going and how he was becoming more and more popular. So. At that point, they said, yeah, let's get her on. And um, Leonard called me, and we talked, and then I had to meet Floyd, and he had to be happy with me. But he was happy with me. What, what do you pitch him when you first... You know, Mayweather is when he get, walks in a room, everyone it just it commands attention, whether he likes it or not. Now, to speak with him, it's a little oh, you, know, you get a little nervous. What did you say to him? How do you how did you approach him from what you remember that solidified that deal with him? so we can write it down? Yeah, I mean, You're taking I, notes. I think the best thing to do is like stay in the let them come to you, let them feel you out. You know, I pretty much was told what they wanted me to do in the beginning. I honestly don't know if Floyd knew my name. The lady over there. Back then, 
that was a girl. Um, but yeah, I think just being patient and, you know, the biggest thing for the fighters is to be able to trust you with their career. Also with, you know, you get pretty close and personal, so you do know some things happening behind the scenes and you have to really gain your trust. And the last thing you want to say is, don't worry, you can trust me. Oh, yeah. You just don't say that. Because if, if it comes naturally, you know, I think with Floyd, he's a very loyal person. So once... Probably a couple of fights that took him to just make sure that everything was good and I was doing my job. You know, Floyd is a perfectionist and he did his job to the best of his, I mean, just to perfection. And so you had to do the same thing. You know, people, I know sometimes my reputation preceded itself, but I was getting a lot of, people don't understand that the fighters expect a lot. They want you to protect them. They want you to be mindful of like how many interviews they're doing and when you want to, you know, there could be one little side glance and then you know, okay, you gotta step in. Where people might have thought, oh, can I step in? But it's a real dance with your client to make sure that they stay happy. My job was to make sure they, not just Floyd, but anybody I work with, that they're happy. The media, I try to help you guys out as much as I can, but my priority is when, when did you come into that awareness that you wanted to stay specifically in this lane? Because we see so many people are easy. Oh, I'm the promoter. I'm the manager. I'm the advisor. I'm the, the wallet, the driver, the banker, the babysitter. And they have all these titles. And it's like a jack of all trades, master of none. And you have mastered this to a level that others to have to admire so how do you know what is that story of wanting to stay in that way i mean i came from a fear of background i didn't just come to box. i always tell people don't necessarily come into boxing because you love boxing for me i was a publicist with an agency in new york for seven years before i actually really got into it and it wasn't even because I wanted to get into boxing, but by default, I went to the Olympics and um, met Riddick Bo at the 1988 Olympics, which really dates me. Um, but it was after that experience, I went to a World Cup, I went to a bunch of Olympics. So I was getting publicity experience. Mm. And then I was able to make sure that I knew what I was doing. And so I only know public relations that's what i was taught to do that's my trade so i didn't really know how to do anything yeah can you fill in where you have to a hundred percent but for me i knew okay well this is what you do and this is what you're good at so i stayed right there and developed my career and my background just by really staying there. yeah you're a mainstay in when it comes to boxing when people here at Kelly Swanson, you're at the top of the list. Everyone knows you, and especially for a female in media, and just in boxing in general. We've all looked up to you. I've even admitted I was so scared of you. We would talk to you at first, yeah, but I'm like, no. I'm scared of Kelly when you start. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Come on. Yeah. But hey, well, there's a will, there's a way. There is a way. Right? Yeah, I, I did. And I was like, and now she hugs me. Well, I hug her every time. Yeah, she just sits there. <laughs> yeah, we do. You know, I think that it gets lost on people, too, just how many things are going on. Yeah. Not even fight week. Like, we just had the uh, press conference in Los Angeles and New York for this fight. And in addition to making sure the fighters get to where there's the network and there's the live stream, you have to keep them happy and the, the promoters of the event, the network carrier of the event. Plus all of us, Kelly, 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 can I, 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 how do you unplug when a fight is over? What does the, the reset look for you to get ready for the next big thing? How many days at this point does it take you to do that reset? I mean, part of what I do too, though, and thanks to Sam Jackson and Andrew Roberts, my mainstays, they've been with me a long time and I appreciate them so much. We have to set up all these things. So this room that you see here, I designed a big stage right there. So I, I have like an eye for the press conferences. They basically say, okay, Kelly, we're going to New York and LA, or we're going to Dallas, LA, New York. I mean, back in the day, we did many more cities. And that's all they tell me. And they trust me to you know, do what I need to do. So my job actually starts even before we get to the tour. And then I start acting in my PR role to make sure that everybody gets what they need and as best of our ability. Um, 
But yeah, once we come to Pipe Week, it's always exciting. You get to see your the fruition of all your work, the culmination of all the hours that you spent on the phone, coordinating as much as you can, and then making sure the fighters are happy. And then, you know, you go home. I have a life at home. I got a family, a lot of friends. And so I think it's also a blessing that you can just kind of detach for a minute and then wait for the next one. They used to roll a lot sooner than our schedule is now, especially for this year. And I think COVID switched that up a little bit. But there were times when we'd have to turn around. Well, we'd have a Saturday, for example, and we'd be, you know, using this room to promote the next fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So I think this year the schedule has been. It's been big fights. The difference with this year and other years is this might not be as many fights, but there's all the real. Yeah, it's Ben's proper. That was a lot of work. I think because they were both kind of fresh and a big fight moment, they had never kind of been in those moments. So it was really fun to so enjoy myself a lot on that fight. But they were also they were both very enthusiastic to do what we needed to do. Everybody was excited that it was such a good matchup. I think Canelo sees him yet, so he takes it on stride. I see Jamel enjoying himself a lot because he's never been in this big, big stage yet. He's been in big stages, but this is big. So I really like watching a fighter who hasn't been on the stage get to feel this. And I was just telling somebody today, I said it's, it's really like a wedding. You right. plan these events, and then you go get married, and then it's over. So before you know it, you got to enjoy the moment, take it all in, and balancing those two, because I'm sure Jamel is super excited. And, you know, he's getting the attention he deserves. He's such a great partner. And, you know, I'm hoping he's taking it all in. He's going to have so much fun at the way in. It's outside. The people are going to be screaming. Are you going to have a thing for us for the media? Yeah. It's, it's sadly the hottest day. Bring your umbrellas. Bring your umbrellas. The hottest day of, it? and it's um, not even right? summer anymore. Cool. Yeah, and then to, on it Saturday, to it's going to be 70, 88. Is it 88 That's going to be hot. That's not hot. No, in the sun. I live here. Just this bring your umbrella and your brown. You don't have to you bring your sunscreen. Yeah, I have uh, all yeah, the brown. time. So besides boxing, I know that you, I don't know if you still do it, the Pivot Podcast. Yeah, you do their PR. The yeah. A fantastic podcast. Yes. Uh, and then what other... What other we work with that? NFL football players. Um, we actually have a new client with Gamebred Boxing, okay. which is um, a Masvidal's company. They, they um, thank God, the UFC. Yeah, recently. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just we just helped them. We um, the UFC. I got to know the people at the UFC when Floyd fought McGregor. And again, I think like our reputation. We just do our job. We come and do our job. You know, we we try to be social and have a good time. But I'm pretty serious about my job. So even in that case, the UFC was very impressed. They're like, "Wow, you guys do a lot." Because I, again, planned that whole tour, the cities, the big arenas, and they just showed up. And that was, that was, uh, sorry, it was, that was huge. I we, were, we were flying overnight on private jets, exhausted. We all, we went all the way from L.A., we go? LA, LA, Toronto, New York, and then all the way to London in like three days. Wow. And we had to play in all those cities. But anyway, the UFC, I've stayed friendly with them. And, uh, Lene, you know, Lene from here. She, she's the one I uh, work out at. My, my trainer trains her too. So she, she when Masvidal was trying to do this, um, it's bare metal, actually. They're an MMA bare knuckle. They're MMA bare knuckle. And uh, so they were looking for some help. And um, she recommended us. So, like, so we try, you know, look, I have my own small business, and it's important to stay in business. So your business is thriving for how many years now? Oh, I've been in business 25 years. 
That's incredible. I started with eight thousand dollars. Wow. Back in the day, that was that was more back then. than now. Would you ever want a documentary on your company, even if you're shy about it specifically being about Kelly, but more about the the growth of the history of Swanson Communications? I think if I had done a better job documenting it, it would be a little easier. But I I learned early on again that publicists are supposed to be in the background. So I don't really, I mean, I'm happy with our success and I'm glad I'm successful and I appreciate my reputation and my success personally, but it's not, it's not, I'll watch it's it. not I'm watching it. You know, one day I'm putting it down, I'm putting out in the universe and you will be our peer. Our PR agent for our well, show. I certainly hope so. We gotta get our coins up. I okay. always ask you every time I see you, I'm like, what's the best advice you can give us for our show? We've made strides from the very beginning till now. I mean, for us to be doing a live stream here in the media, we, yeah, we earned this spot. It's so great. And I will tell you, I've noticed that like in social media seems to be trying to handle, and I think you guys should start developing the big thing characters with all the influencers that are part of this fight. Yeah. 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 yeah, they started somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I think you guys also have your reputation and you have the niche, and I think it's important to like across the board just figure out how to get in as much exposure as you can become characters i find social media to be people that are characters are the winners so that's a fact because that's uh, the couple that, that we saw why haven't you ever had a brain day what's going on what's here you know what that's a good that's idea. Really good idea. idea come on yeah. Kelly. she's that's already helping she us she gave us that one for free yeah Oh, okay, we're on that. We're gonna think about Start that. A and go for it. Oh. All right. Well, mine is already the real fight, though. But now mine is like too long. It's too long. It's too long. So what did it? Three words? Three, three words? Or one word? Just let it marry. Hmm. Like a good fight. We're gonna think of some stuff. That's a good thing. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. That that was a compliment. No, people would be like, that. That sounds too stuck up. Confident. That's your own insecurity. That's true. You know when. Come on, he called himself the fish. Or oh, the lion. Oh, the lion. Oh, oh. No, no, I'm a lion. No, but we were talking about oh. Canelo. And, you know, we were we asked Alvin Barak and even Brian Hunter. She said, Hippo, Hippo is a very dangerous animal. What could Canelo call himself? And she looked it up a porcupine or a rhino. What do you think would uh, Canelo call themselves? No, 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 no. no those, those are animals are, that can beat a lion. Beat a lion. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. Canelo saying, Oh, or a porcupine. <laughs> you know, people think a lion is like the king of the jungle, but I actually learned because I went to Tanzania on a safari with my mom. So we went to the Serengeti, and the tour guides told us that the lion actually does a very hard job because they are the hunters. So to even try to kill a wildebeest or any, you know, giraffe, anything that they can eat. They're the carnivores of the, of the, um, of the, of the park. It's a national park, it's not a park. Um, where the other animals have to, like, they're vegetarian. Oh, right? Yeah. They all eat plants and trees and everything, so the elephants can just go and tear down leaves and everything, but the lion has the muscles. So that's what makes them, like, super, super. Yep. And also, the female is the hunter because the male lion has a huge mane mm -hmm. and they can't shimmy through the grass. Like in, a leopard they, yeah, yeah, to try to catch the prey. Move it to oh, women. We're learning but this. But then, too. of course, <laughs> the women go and give the prey to the. Oh, God. Women. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. Yeah. All right, Kelly. Well, we've Thank taken you. so much. Thank Please you. take a snap. Go yes. find yes. your bag. I'm so hungry. Oh, now Please, take whatever take you as like. many as you want. We know.